What made you fall in love with this show? Well, I, there's so much to fall in love with, but above all, it's an amazing story. It's a, it's a beautiful, heartwarming story. And Joe, who has this amazing, wonderful deal with the devil where he gets to live out his fantasy of being a baseball player and then confronts all these wonderful people and strange women. And, um, but for me, most importantly, it's about this journey of this man and, uh, and how he overcomes his own fears and defies the devil which is something I think, uh, you know, is very special, but makes it very unique. You know, it's one of these great stories in the history of all of theater, you know, the Faustian story. So, and this is an incredible retelling of it. Talk about working here at Encores. I mean, what, what the experience has been like for you and why you come back time after time. Well, you know, uh, you know, they, there's always that saying about Encores that it's, uh, you know, some are stock with the A-team. I think that's Kathleen Marshall who said that. And this, this particular sort of, Summer is like on steroids <laughs> with some of the great, great people of Broadway, great performers. It's a thrill to have Sean Hayes, too, coming back. It's just a delicious thing to have Jane Krakowski doing this part. So at Encores, you're surrounded by this incredible talent, um, not only on stage, but also in the orchestra. We have a phenomenal orchestra that we get. So um, then the wonderful designers that I have, John Lee Beatty. William Ivy Long, Peter Kazarowski, Scott Lara. These are great people. Uh, yeah, so. What's the biggest challenge for a director with working at Encores, and what's the easiest aspect for a director working at Encores? Well, the biggest, the biggest challenge is just allowing the, the musicals to be, letting them be what they are, um, in, both in all their glory and all their faults. And that, I think that's what makes it very special for the Encores audiences. Um, it's a, it's a, it, the biggest challenge for the director is to allow, not to reinvent the wheel sometimes. Sometimes all the wheel needs to be is polished and shined and made to look good. And so that's sort of what happens here. When, and it's very exciting. It's very fun to do that. Um, What's been the best part of the experience so far for you with working on Damn Yankees? I would have to say working with the company. i got a great group. Randy Graff, Cheyenne Jackson, by the way, who's going to be just stellar in this. Um, Vianne Cox, it's a very, very good group. So being around the actors and then getting to know the play really well and trusting it, trusting for what it was, trusting the, the, what the audience is in 1955, what the experience can be re-experienced in, you know, in 2008. The role, I'm playing Meg Boyd and it's a very different role for me. She's a housewife, but she's not an urban Jewish housewife. She's from the Midwest. She's not a wisecracker, although I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to find the places where I can slip them in, you know. But she's all good and heart and hope and strength and waiting for her, believing that her in the power of love and that her husband, Joe Boyd, is going to come back. That's what attracted me to her, just her strength. It just, it's sort of like it's in the walls. So I walked in and I was like, oh, this feels really good. I might be home. <laughs> you know, I might, you know, be able to follow in the footsteps of great. I mean, Gene Stapleton played this role before the, in the movie and in the original production. So to follow in her footsteps is a real honor. Well, talk about the role. Tell me about it and what attracted you to it. Well, you know, uh, it's, uh, she walks on stage and she says something funny and then she leaves. And then she walks on stage again, and she says something funny, and then she leaves. And so it's great. <laughs> the onus of the show is not on me. I just get to come on and be funny and go, which is, you know, what I do. <laughs> I mean, I could do other things, but um, I enjoy walking on and being funny and leaving. I'm playing older Joe, and I'm a baseball fanatic, a Washington senator fanatic, and I want it so bad that I trade my soul for a chance to be young and have Washington win. And what it's kind of a universal story because you go like, how many people, if they're given the chance to do something over, to really grab it? Would you grab it if it meant a big sacrifice or not? And that, so that's kind of an interesting, poignant story. This is such a fun show. Did you know the show well? Uh, I actually did it in school, high school, and I played young Joe, and I got my first review saying I was soupy but sincere. <laughs> and then I actually played Applegate at Westchester Broadway Theater, and now I'm playing older Joe. The role. The role is delicious. She's a sweet middle-aged woman who, her and her sister just go to the ball games and are fanatic fans of the sport. And I'm not really a sports fan in life, but my husband's a Laker fan, so I've been emulating his depression and highs and lows, which is bizarre because the Lakers lost last week, and he was comatose. He couldn't uh, get off the couch. He was such a mess. <laughs> but um, so I've been kind of taking a. And you see the the fans on the train. 
playing a lot. You know, the cute little ladies in the, the little high white socks going to the Yankee games. Um, so I've been basing the character a lot on that, a lot on people who are just, because, you know. You got no That old bottle and what my plan Sings with N and I Use the standard pattern Plus a little this up And a little that up With an emphasis On the On the letter Talk about her. Who is your Lola? I know it's, it rehearsals have just started and all, but just to, it's such a wonderful role. I mean, it's such a rich role that Richard Adler and Jerry Ross wrote. Talk about her. Yeah. Um, well, she is the devil's assistant um, who is brought in to tempt Joe Hardy to stay on the devil's side, basically. Um, but, you know, it's uh, she, it's a complicated part because she actually starts out as a sinner and, uh, you know, on the devil's side and then sort of reconsiders all of her own choices that she's made in her life, whether she should have sold her soul to the devil. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely, complicated part with amazing numbers. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think we're staying very true to the original material. We're not reinventing the wheel. Um, John Rando loves baseball, <laughs> the director, and is sort of like the mayor of baseball, and he's sort of infused all of that enthusiasm that he has for baseball into the show, which is wonderful. Um, but I think what's so wonderful about this production is that we are keeping it very 1955. And there's so many signature moves that are so 1955 that you couldn't do now like you know there's a moment in whatever Lola wants where she does a turn and then stands with her legs wide apart and her hands on her hips it's sort of the iconic pose it's like if you chose to do that now in night in 2008 you know you'd be like what are you doing but it's so 1950s so you know you need to do it it just it you want to do it I definitely want to do it I want to bring all of that to it because um there's sort of a wonderful innocence and um, on the precipice of everything changing sort of time. This is my first show in New York, yes. I, 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 it has not been clarified if this is Broadway or not to me. I'm just here having a good time. Tell me what made you say yes. Um, I love the fact that we're sticking to the authenticity of the original show. Um, it's not the Hollywood version of on stage of a show, which I love, actually. Like, I can't wait to see all those new shows coming up. But um, but I like that it's old school theater and old school show. And I don't know, it's kind of, it was time for me to say yes to something. So I I'm glad this is the first thing. Now, did you know the show very well? Did you know the role of Mr. Applegate? I didn't. I saw the show, you know, years and years ago, but I didn't sit there and, like, memorize the show. I, I enjoyed it, but um, I didn't watch the movie. I didn't. You know, I talked to Victor Garber a little bit. Um, I talked to Jerry Lewis a little bit, and um, but but I didn't really want to see or hear it too much, so I could obviously do my own thing. Had you worked with John before? No, I didn't even know John until the audition. So I was excited to audition for him actually, just to show him that uh, I was, you know, I wanted to show him that I was right for this. I really, really wanted to do this. And um, just to show a different side of me. And also New York has really only seen me sing pop music, so this is really legit and fun. And 
you know, my big boy voice. Well, let's talk about these songs. Richard Adler and Jerry Ross, they, they, they wrote classic Broadway scores between Damn Yankees and yep. Pajama Game. Talk about this score. Oh, the score is so beautiful. It's so old school, 1950s, just, you know, beautiful me melodies that, that carry through the whole thing. The orchestra, oh my God, it's it's gorgeous. And A Man Doesn't Know is my theme, and I sing it throughout, and it's amazing. They've also reinstated um, Two Lost Souls as me and, me and Jane. I know in the 94 revival, they gave it to Applegate. It just works better for uh, our characters. Um, and uh, yeah, it's so good. I love the music. Rob Berman's great. We did uh, Red Eye of Love together in the O'Neill last summer, so that's how I knew the music director. And uh, he's he's very sensitive and has a beautiful ear. And you're going to be doing the original Bob Fosse choreography, which has to be like really great. So good. I don't have much dancing, thankfully, but yeah, it's so clear and simple and perfect for the part, perfect for the show rather. Everything is, you know, there's nothing overdone. If there's a movement, it's just, it's because it needs to be there. So that is what's great. And I, I am in the, the Two Lost Souls number, which some people are doing behind me. I'm in that. It's kind of my big number. And I am doing Fosse dancing. So next to John Celia. I mean, whatever. Yeah. <laughs>